Yo, what is up, Sex Beast Crazy Rabbit here, and today we're going to be remaking a video that I did a long time ago. We're going to be doing all Call of Duty boss zombies. We're going to we're going to consider a boss zombie anything that's not like a regular zombie that has a special tribute to it that negatively affects you. So the giant robot in Origins that comes crashing down would not be a boss zombie because that thing does not negatively affect you. It only affects you when you make stupid decisions. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the first boss zombie ever introduced, starting in Shinonuma and ending off in Moon, will be the Hellhounds. Now, a lot of people came and complained that, oh, they were also in town, you could turn them on and off. That literally means nothing to me. Just saying you could turn them on and off does not mean they were actually in that map. That just means that Treyarch decided to give you guys the option to have a little bit more fun. That's like, they also gave you the option to turn on and off magic. I mean, come on now. And also, town is not its own map. It is a sub-map off of Transit, which was its own map, which Transit actually had the storyline to, and town did not. So, yeah. Transit, own map, town, not a map. And giving you the option to turn on and off does not really mean anything. And Dogs is my personal favorite boss zombie, mainly because of the storyline they have behind them. There's a lot, a couple other boss zombies that actually have a storyline behind them, and a couple others that don't. And Dogs were one of the best, has one of the best storylines. You know, you actually care about this, you actually know what happened, you actually know the background story. And the best weapon used against these guys would probably be a shotgun. Yes, I know you could use the ray gun and the wonder weapon, but any other gun would probably not really do anything besides explosive, mainly because these fuckers are fast, and they have an incredibly small hitbox for their size, so... Dogs, use a shotgun, upgraded, when you get to higher rounds, you know, start whipping out the ray gun and the wonder weapon. So let's move on to the next one. Alright, up next is going to be the Nova Crawlers, or Nova Zombies, whatever you wish to call them. These guys first appeared on Kino and 5, and lastly appeared on Moon. Now, on Moon, there was sort of a little bit of tweak to them. They were actually called the phase, Phasing Zombies, I believe. And these guys were basically Nova Crawlers that could teleport short distances. So we're going to be classifying these guys as the same zombie. Now, these guys were mainly affected by, of course, the ray gun and whatever wonder weapon was on that map. And... Mainly shotguns, mainly because these guys are pretty small and, of course, like small hitboxes. So shotguns is probably the way to go. You can use really any any other weapon. An explosive weapon will do, but shotguns is probably the more preferred way to go, mainly because the hitboxes are so small, you can just hit fire with the shotgun, and, and shotguns do so much damage close up. So shotguns probably the way to go, but the downside of these guys is they just throw Nova Gas up in the air. I really wish there was something to counter the, counter the Nova Gas. That would have been like a pretty cool. Maybe have like a tac tactical mask because I would have definitely got that because getting Nova Gas is really a pain in the ass, especially on Kino when they didn't really have controlled spawns, they just spawned literally everywhere, but on like 5 and Moon, you know, they really had controlled spawns, so maybe the tactical mask, whatever, would have been a bad idea to get, but on Kino would have been a fantastic idea, so Nova, Nova Crawlers, I really like the concept, I really like the idea, so I'm a huge fan of these guys, let's move on to the next one. Alright, next is going to be the Monkeys in Ascension. Now these guys were a pain in the ass on Solo, but when you're playing with 4 players, they're not really that bad. They, they do increasingly get a lot and lot stronger as the rounds go up. I mean, you get to round 100 or something, these fuckers, the only, the only thing that's going to kill them is the Thunder Gun. The Ray Gun doesn't even do anything on that high of a round. But yeah, these guys were pretty much a pain in the ass on Solo, mainly because if you're on Solo, you're only going to be guarding Jug and Quick Revive. Everything else is going to get stolen. I mean, some rounds you're going to get lucky and they're all just going to come out the one perk and you can easily guard it and you get a free one. But mainly, they're just going to take all your other perks. And of course, any real thing will do damage to these things. Uh, mainly, of course, a shotgun, explosive, ray gun, or thunder gun on early rounds, but when you get to high rounds, you're going to want to use the thunder gun, mainly because these things are really strong, and they're just really, these things are really small, these things have the smallest hitboxes, so these things are really fucking hard to hit, so you just want to use the thunder gun, even though, th even though the thunder gun doesn't really kill them in one hit, it still blows them back, you can just use another thunder gun bolt, and, and there's not that many that spawn, there's only like a couple, so... These guys are definitely a pain in the ass on Solo, but on four players, I really do like them. Just wish they would have changed up something about Solo when you play with it, because, you know, I mean, I have no problem with buying the perk back. It's just, you know, I, do, I really don't want to have to keep running around the map buying all my stuff back every five to six rounds. Up next is going to be George Romero. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of the zombie community can agree that we do not like George Romero, mainly because he's just so annoying. He constantly follows you. It takes a lot to get rid of them. I mean, to get rid of them, you have to keep him in the water. You have to unload like an entire ray gun and almost an entire scavenger just to get rid of him. And you get a free perk and a wonder off. Yay. He comes back right next round. I mean, you could use the VR-11 or the Vril on him, but that just makes him go away for like 10 seconds and he comes right back. So the best way to get rid of him was basically just put him in the center of the ice and ice water and basically unload a ray gun and a scavenger with him. And if you're playing on solo, make sure he does not leave or else you're fucked. And every now and then he gets pissed off and he blurs your vision with an electric and he slows you down. And if you shoot him once, he gets pissed off at you. So George was a terrible idea. Pretty sure a lot of people can agree with me on this. If you do, if you think George was a good idea, please put, put it in the comments on why you think he is. But personally to me, I did not like George. I thought he was just a big nuisance. And on the advertisement for the map, they claimed it was a sniper-friendly map. Well, 
It's not really a sniper friendly map mainly because of the fog and George is following you 24-7 so you really can't sit anywhere in camp so George was a completely bad idea. Alright up next is going to be the Flamer and Shrieker Zombie on Shangri-La. Now these guys I didn't really have any problems with these guys except for when you were doing the easter egg the Flamer guy of course would never spawn. You can use anything to kill these guys, these guys are rather weak. And I mean, they don't really have any problem with these guys. These guys rarely ever spawn on me. I mean, you get them spawning make like once every 10 rounds, I guess. But I know I never really saw these guys. And especially when you're trying to do the Easter egg, you would never see the Flamer Zombie. He's just like, yeah, I'm not spawning for another 15 rounds. But these guys, I guess, were a really good idea. There wasn't really much storyline behind them. So I have really nothing to say. I mean, of course, I barely ever get to see these guys. It took me a while to get the flame ran triggers on me for this so yeah i really don't have any opinion on them like like i said you know i could go both ways i could say i hate them i could say i like them but i mean the concepts of them were pretty good i just wish they would have somehow tweaked it a little bit more to make it a little bit more interesting all right and lastly for the black ops one and world of war section is going to be the astronaut and moon now the astronaut and moon i'm not really a fan of because i feel like he's sort of like a george romero except for he's a little easier to kill and I'm not really a huge fan of him because he spawns a lot. Sometimes you can spawn a two times, two, three times around, depending on what round you're on. Sometimes you won't even spawn that round. It's just he's completely random. And sometimes you just you're running through the laboratories, you go through a door, you got a huge train behind you, and there he is. And for some reason this guy really loves taking your jug. Easiest way to kill him probably is the ray gun. The zap gun does absolutely nothing to him. So just get a ray gun, unload on him, and he'll be good until next round when he spawns back. And this guy is just a real pain in the ass, especially when you're cycling and say you want to go, oh, let's go pack a bunch. And when you're running back through the labs, you got to take your time when you're going through the doors or else he's just going to surprise you and tickle your pickle. And he's going to, of course, take Jug because that's what he loves taking with me. I'm not sure. What, what does he take when you guys always get captured or do you guys ever get captured? Because I really have bad luck when I'm playing this map and I have really no patience whatsoever when I'm running through the laboratory. And he always seems to grab me and he never seems to grab my friends. So very curious to hear what are your guys' opinions on this guy because I could go both ways. I like the concept of him. I just wish maybe there was an easier way to detect him when you're running through areas except for having to pause, open the door, and see if he's real quick, right there real quick. So... What are your guys' opinions on him? And let's move on to Black Ops 2. Alright, coming in for Black Ops 2 Transit was the Denizens and Avogadro. Now, the Denizens I absolutely hate almost as much as George. Probably, I probably hate them about the same. Mainly because these guys were just a big nuisance. If you're on Transit, you can either run you can either run around the map or you can take the bus. Now, if you take the bus, you're going to be waiting a long-ass time because that motherfucker doesn't ever want to drive. But if you, if you decide to run when you have Jug, you can easily run around the map, but you're going to be taking probably as long as you would with the bus, maybe a little bit quicker, because, you know, you got to run through this fog, you don't always know where you're going, and these denizens are going to get onto you. Yes, I know you can knife it, I've, I've played the map before, I know you can get the Galvan Knuckles and punch them, but they're still going to latch onto you, and they're still just going to keep coming and coming, they're still going to scrape your eyes, they're still going to slow you down, they're still going to blur your vision, I mean... It doesn't make the map whatsoever hard at all. It just makes it a real nuisance to have to run through the fog every now and then and deal with these denizens keep coming at you and coming at you. I mean, I really don't like to do that stuff because it's mainly just a waste of time. And yeah, so now let's move on to the Avogadro. The Avogadro I really don't have any problem with. Just like the zombies on Shangri-La, I barely ever see him spawn. And when I do, he never really goes after me. He always goes after someone else. Or even when I'm playing solo, I mean, it's re relatively easy to get rid of him. Just go up and punch him like once or twice. Or just throw an EMP at him and he's gone for forever and he only really spawns when you start a new round and the thunder is going on so just be careful when you start the new rounds and he really ever never spawns i know you can spawn during the middle of a round when the thunder's going on but i really really never see that so yeah the avogadro never really spawns on me especially when you're doing the easter egg he never wants to fucking spawn so yeah avogadro really i'm in the middle again just like with the shangri-la zombies i don't really have an opinion on him because i don't really ever see him that much to, for him to be a real threat so now let's move on to the next map Alright, up next for Die Rise was the Jumping Jacks or Minions, I believe that is their official name. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much the Nova Zombies without the Nova and more of the phasing or more of the teleporting side of them. And these guys, you know, I, I kind of like the idea of getting a free perk if you, I believe you get a free perk if you don't miss. So you pretty much have to have 100% accuracy or something like that. And basically the easiest way to do that is just get the Trample Steam, set them all up, and pretty much just go from there. So I really don't have any opinion on these guys. I kind of like the concept of them. But if you're playing with some people that really don't know what they're doing, you're probably going to get fucked because they're going to end up going down because they have absolutely no idea what you're doing. Or if somebody gets in trouble, they fire a shot, you know. So it's kind of hard to communicate, but solo these guys are relatively easy to conquer and get your free perk. So again, I'm sort of leaning towards the idea of where I like these kind of guys. They're very easy to hit. You really don't have to do anything. Anything will really kill them. The trample scene is probably the best way to go so you can get your free perk. But again, 
I'm leaning towards the side that I like them. I'm very curious to hear your guys' opinions on these guys because I hear a lot of people say they hate them, a lot of people say they like them, and I'm sort of chilling right there in the middle again with the majority of these boss zombies. So now let's move on to the next one. Alright, up next in Mob of the Dead was Brutus. Now, Brutus, I really, I kind of like this guy. I like the idea of him, mainly because he spawns when you open certain areas or you do something specific in the map, he would spawn. He would just come in, and he's relatively easy to kill. All you have to do is show off his helmet and shoot his head. Any gun will do. Assault rifle, SMG, shotgun, wall weapon, really anything you can use will kill him. He's relatively easy to kill. And I do like the storyline behind him. If you actually know the storyline behind him, actually, Brutus is actually a good guy just trying to get revenge on what you did to him. So, Brutus, good guy. Um, it's kind of a little twist ending right there. The only thing I do not like about this guy is when you go to the bridge, he just spawns more and more every round. I feel like they put that there to make sure you just don't go to the bridge. They try to keep you away from the bridge as much as possible because you can just cycle on the bridge for days and it's really easy, but I feel like they just kept spawning him in more and more to keep you away from it. I mean, it doesn't really make it any harder. It just makes it more of a nuisance because him coming in, screaming and yelling and shaking your vision. I don't know why Treyarch likes to do that, like to shake your vision up, but hell, it's Treyarch. They do a lot of things. So now let's move on to the next one. Alright, up next was Lucy Lane, or The Witch, and Buried. So if you don't know the storyline behind this, link will be annotation on the screen. Just click it, and you can know the storyline behind Lucy Lane, this witch that lived in the mansion. And I like her because she has a, actually has a real-life background story, you know? It's sort of made up, but sort of real, and I think that's pretty cool. So, I do like the zombie. I like the idea of her. You know, she takes your points. I just wish they would have done her in specific rounds, and not just putting her in front of Pack Punch, and whoever goes in there, she just spawns. Mainly because you could have somebody scumbag run in there, and then all of a sudden you got... So Lucy Lane spawning on and you've taken all your points. And I don't like, like how they put it in front of Pack Punch. I mean, there is a way to get through the mansion. I've made a video about this. You can easily get through the mansion with all your points. Just take your time, go slow, shoot the zon shoot her when it's appropriate, reload when it's appropriate, and you'll make it through completely fine. Just take your time, go slow, don't rush through it. I'm just not a fan of how they put it in front of Pack Punch, mainly because some people that don't know how to get through it, they're going to lose all their points and they're going to complain how they lost all their points and stuff like that. So I'm not a real huge fan of that. Then they're going to then they're gonna start asking for points and stuff like that. So any real zombie player that knows what to do can easily get through it, but mainly for the people that don't know what they're doing, they're going to lose all their points. So I can understand how this thing can be good and also how some people can hate it. So again, this thing, I like it, but I could see why some people would hate it. So now let's move on to the next one. Alright, the last two boss zombies, well one of these could arguably be considered just a regular zombie, but I'm going to go ahead and throw them in the boss zombie category, mainly because they only spawn during certain situations, which were the Templar zombies, and these only spawn when one, you go to the crazy room or crazy place, can't remember what it's called, or you turn like on a power or something like that. The reason I'm giving these guys a boss zombie is because, well one, when you turn on the power and those guys start coming, you only get points when you knife them or shoot them, you only get like, in the head, you only get like 10 points when you kill them, so they're really not really nothing like a real zombie so they're kind of different you know they have a different tribute to them and they're also trying to negatively affect you and if you stop them you actually get a positive outcome so we can consider these guys a boss zombie and of course they only spawn in two different scenarios so kind of a little different than regular zombies another thing another boss zombie that was in this map was gonna be the panzat sold that i believe I'm, i hope i'm pronouncing that right aka the bioshock looking zombie now this can arguably be considered one of the most powerful boss zombies mainly because he always comes in the, the beginning of a round, and he always just sort of likes to get in the middle of the zombie pack, and he's kind of hard to shoot when you're getting chased by lots of zombies, jumping up and down through the mud and stuff like that, but he's relatively easy to kill if you know how. All you have to do is, when he shoots at you, let him grab you, and I mean, just, we'll make sure there's no zombies really around you first. Let him grab you, and when he's dragging you in, he's going to have this little red blinking light. Shoot that, and all you have to really do is just shoot that like once or twice, and it's going to go down very easily. So it's a very easy way to kill him. And yeah, these are all the boss zombies. Please, I'm very curious to know what are your guys' favorites, and anybody that has a negative comment, well, you can go fuck yourself. Anybody that has a positive comment, you are awesome. And yeah, if you guys could, please leave a like and subscribe. Now. Peace. Bye bye.